Okay, guys, here's Shut Up. Shut up! Lips pursed in surprise and anticipation. You shut up! Fists clenched in anticipation. You want me to pop you upside the head? And the flinch of the shoulders followed with a, again? Shoulders shrugged. Do what you gotta do. I may be short, but I'm tougher than you think. Shoulders give way to a curly and unfurling of fingers in come on motion. Don't make me do it again. A long index finger extends out toward the other. In your sick mind, I'm causing you to do it. I'll do something and you'll not forget what I did. The voice of anger gave way to a trembling whisper. You and you and some invisible army, you better back off. Looking up, ah, and turning away on another, ah, it could be heard, but you're, you're never going to hit me again. I'll, I will do what I want and when I want. And he pushed her into the wall. Pulling a knife from a counter, she turned from the wall and thrust her body toward his, but he stepped to the side, allowing the motion of her body to move past him, her small frame landing against the wall, or another wall. Displaying a physical limpness in her arms and body, she uttered a grunt that could be heard while he laughed. Ha <laughs> you see, you can't hurt me. I own you. Running out of the room, thoughts of fear, anger, and rage overwhelmed her synaptic processes. I've got to get away. I'm really going to get hurt. Passing through a bedroom, she ran into a restroom and locked the door. Pausing for a moment, she turned near toward the door and listened for continued danger. His laughing and yelling filled the premises and seemingly turning her intent to survive, his voice was increasing with intensity as each second passed. Is he drunk? She thought. Almost losing the mental capacity to think and make a plan, she thought. He's really loud. Maybe the neighbors will hear him screaming and call the police. But several minutes passed and he became almost tyrannical. She could hear his screams that seemed to be directed at someone in the room with him. But only she heard his name, heard her name, and at the end or beginning of each tyrant, profanity peppered every statement. He has gone crazy. If he remembers I'm here, he will kill me. But no help came. Calm down, calm down, she repeated over and over. I've got to calm down. Pull it together as if trying to prove to herself that she was okay. She raised her stretched out hands in front of her chest, but her fingers continued to tremble. Employing other senses, she continued to listen in an effort to determine what he was doing, but it was impossible to really know what was happening. During the next few minutes, he became quiet, weighing on her sense of security and whether she was really in danger. Again, she put an ear up against the door, listening, and listening and listening a little bit more but there just wasn't enough proof that he was gone or if he was still there she stretched for the doorknob and and considered opening the door but as her fingers neared the knob breathing she could hear breathing from the other hallway and she stepped back to the center of the room quietly reverently she said are you there in a stern almost commanding voice, an answer was received. You're damn right I'm still here and I'm going to kick your butt when you open that door. Again her entire body began to tremble as she assumed a fetal position on the floor. While gasping for breaths of fresh air, tears began to stream down her face and pull up on the floor. But the pools of tears was not apparent until a hand dropped to the floor. What? she screamed. Look what you caused me to do. Don't come in here. Gasping for air, she stood up and started to pace around the room while tears continued to drop to the floor. She grabbed a tissue from the counter and started to pat the tears from her face. Several minutes passed and her facial expressions resembled a more normal state of consciousness. Hmm, do 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 do. He sang out in the hallway. While he continued with a do 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 da da, she allowed thoughts that she normally would not think come into her mind. What can I do? Where is that carving knife? Pausing for a moment, she turned her head, positioning like a cat, and went and noticed a mouse running across the floor and while, or while catching a bug on the wall. I could kill him if I had that knife. Her fear had festered over the past weeks and months like an infected cut, painfully sensitive to every movement and possible touch. Fear had evolved to defense and then to the concept of murder, something that her religious beliefs would never have allowed her to consider a year ago. 
but like most infected cuts. A point is reached where efforts to fight the infection no longer are effective and lancing or cutting the infection out became the only options to relieve the pressure and remove the poison. And that is exactly what he had become to their relationship. Poison to the love they had once cherished. Pus on the top of their life together. He had to be removed. Thoughts were racing through her mind. She considered that premeditated murder is a capital offense, punishable by death or at least life in prison. But at the same time, she was astonished that the actual thought of killing him belonged to her. She thought, he can't be allowed to continue to physically abuse me and physically ruin my life. I could not let him hurt me anymore. I can't take it anymore, she thought. I've got to get some help and get out of here or, and tears started to stream down her face again. While talking to herself, she placed her hands over her cheeks and eyes and seemed to be crying. Please help me, please help me, what can I do? But with an interrupting voice that seemed to come from a surround sound set of speakers, she heard, what the hell are you doing in there? Get your ass out here! As he banged on the bathroom door, Open this door now. I am not leaving until you come out here. I'm not coming out there while you're acting like this, she, she replied. Are you drunk? He hit the door once more and then started walking down the hallway. Pressing her ear up against the door, it was apparent he was leaving because his steps grew faint and almost disappeared. Then his footsteps began to become louder. He was coming back down the hall. She recognized that sound. It was a chair being sat on the floor. He's sitting just on the other side of the door. She mentally screamed. I'm going to get me a sandwich. Let me know when you're ready to come out. And maybe I will let you have a sandwich too. That's if you're a good girl. His, her entire body shivered and the hair stood up on ends when she heard that good girl comment. I'm going to have to kill him. He's got it. Let, get, I can't get out of here she said. Sitting quietly, she attentively listened as he began to walk down the hallway. The sound of his footsteps continued to diminish, giving her the assurance that he was walking away from her, maybe to get the sandwich you mentioned. The footsteps continued to grow faint and then non-existence. Finally, she whispered, where is that knife? Thinking through her comments prior to entering the bathroom, she sat on the commode lid to ponder what had happened. Considering the last 20 minutes, she recalled that he pushed me and I grabbed the knife, then he shouted at me and I started to run. When I got to the bathroom, I flung the door open, came in and locked the door. Where is the knife? Where is the knife? Several minutes passed and then it was like a eureka moment flashed across her face. When I swung the door open, I dropped the knife just outside the door. She said out, said out loud, if he didn't pick up the knife, the knife is just outside the other side of the door. While recalling that he surprised her earlier by being on the other side of the door, and she murmured, no, 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 I can't go out there. I'm sure he found it. He's waiting for me. With that, with what some would consider an impeccable timing or maybe just a demonic timing, he shouted from a distance, all right, Annie, come on out. Aren't you getting hungry? And in a condescending, almost, you know I'm lying sound, everything's all right. Come on out. Assuming the stance of a statue, she immediately froze and stopped moving. Don't move, don't move, don't breathe, she mentally screamed. Maybe if he's drunk, the food will sober him up, she thought. A moment later, a television turned on and she heard some talking. Almost as a prayer, she thought, he's watching TV. God, please let him fill up on whatever he's eating and then make him go to sleep. She leaned against the bathtub. Apparently, the air conditioner was not on. The air was getting stale and warm. She thought about it for a moment and came to the conclusion that all of her crying had consumed the cool air. When she was crying and screaming, her rapid breathing had warmed the room temperature even further. But the porcelain surface of the tub offered a respite to the uncomfortable environment. Considering how cool the surface was, she started to entertain the thought of taking a bath. But it was just too hot in the room to even turn on the water. But she thought, I have really been sweating. I need to take a bath, but, it, but not if he's sitting outside the door. Are you there? Are you out there? No answer. She snugly put her ear up against the door and immediately and listened intently. There was no movement. She repeated, are you out there? Still there was no answer. 
and then she remembered the knife. Honey, are you out there? She asked again, and there was still no answer. Still standing inches from the door, she considered the knife once more. Maybe, she thought, I can get it now. Immediately upon touching the doorknob, a memory of fear of what happened last time flashed in her mind. She could not, she could still hear him saying, you're damn right I'm still out here, and she backed away from the door again. But the knife served as a mental tarp magnet, pulling all of her thoughts back to the door and the possibility of safely, of safety reaching the knife just beyond her reach on the other side of the door. She approached the door yet again and warmed the knob with the palm of her hand. Are you there? She softly asked again, still no answer. There was no sound or movement other than the voices and sounds of a television show coming from down the hallway. You can do this, you can do this, you can do this, she kept repeating in a soft, nervous whisper. She turned the knob slowly so as not to create a single sound. Once the door bolt clicked, she knew the door was open and he could burst into the room at any moment. She pulled the door toward her, making access to her secure location even vulnerable to his next attack. Peering outside the door, it seemed obvious that he was not there. But was he really gone? At the very moment she took a first step on the, out the door, she heard a whoosh from a commode flushing down the hall. Oh no, she thought, it's, it, he's in the hallway bathroom. She froze like a rabbit, trying to cross the road in front of her approaching automobile and then jumped back into the bathroom like an antelope. Closing the door was not possible. Petrified fear had once again consumed her entire body. Listening quietly for the sound of footsteps to come in her direction, she mentally counted 10, 20, 30, Half a minute had passed until holding her breath in anticipation of being discovered. Still nothing had happened. Maybe, she thought, he won't come down this way. In an attempt to make no sound, she had not released a breath sucked in while out in the hallway and bedroom area, and her head was feeling as if it would explode. But things could be even worse, and she realized this when it was apparent the last cup of oxygen consumed at the door could not be maintained. She sprinted to the bathtub, picked up a towel, and shoved her face in it. Excelling the old, stale breath felt good, but both lungs felt as if flames were consuming the bronchia, and it was like a soldering fluid had boiled over into every microscopic fiber of her being. Deliberate breathing seemed to transform into a more regular, autonomic action. Thank God, she thought, things are returning to normal. Looking across the room and through the door, she noticed the knife was sitting on a chair in the hallway. I need that knife. 